If you have your Bibles this morning, or the preacher says Friday morning, if you ever go to church and out my Bible. He said, I have an app, I have an iPhone, I have an iPad. He said, but I always take a copy of God's Word. He said, you know, this is the real thing. And he said, just be something to him about carrying your Bible. So I hope that you have your Bible with you this morning. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses 5 through 8. I told you last week when we did the first four verses that there was material in here concerning eschatology, the study of last things, that you find nowhere else in Scripture. Last week he was talking about uh, the, the errors that had came into the church. Uh, and, and he said, don't be led, up, led astray by, by spirit or by word or by letter or any forms of communication that may come to you. And today he's going to, uh, to uh, speak in the prevention of these errors and what we can do as believers so that we are not confused and not led astray by every doctrine, every new word of revelation that people have that come down the pipe. Because a lot of times, people with new revelations don't know the old revelation, and that's why it's a new revelation to them. But you, as believers, should know the old revelation, therefore you would not be confused by a new revelation. Paul explains here his past teaching through the Thessalonians. He said, you guys know this. Y'all should be up to date on this stuff. This shouldn't have taken you by surprise because sound doctrine defeats faulty teaching. Amen. 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 Thank you. I thought you were asleep. <laughs> Anytime you have sound doctrinal teaching, you should be aware of when false teaching comes in your hearing and in your presence. And you should, as Paul did in our Sunday school lesson this morning, you should be able to stand and confront the error of another believer when it comes to the fact of a believer's divine revelation. Paul stood against Peter, a pillar in the Jerusalem church. And because Paul did it, that is our example, that we should be willing and able to, to stand for what is right and what is true in God's Word. Are we sound in our faith? I, I mean, I would hope so. <laughs> I would hope that we're not just led astray every time we read a book or watch a movie or something uh, like that. So, if you have your Bible, would you please stand with me while we honor the reading of God's Word. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, we're going to look at 5 through 7. It says, Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. A lot of explaining to do this morning, and again, like I did last week, I apologize to you for the technicality of the presentation, but still, we need to know these things. Sound doctrine. You are to teach the whole counsel of God, not just the good feeling stuff, not just the salvation message, but messages that inform you and prepare you for what is to come in the future. So let's pray this morning. Father, thank you for the privilege to uh, expound to a word. I pray this morning that you would open our hearts to receive, our ears to hear, and our minds to understand. For we pray in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. As we look at our text this morning, Paul's going to explain the delay in the, in the uh, in, in lawlessness and the destruction of the lawless one. But uh, in looking at this, I told you last week I had too much material. I did. That's why we were here till 10 after. So I have cut some verses off of this, and that should be 2, 5 through 7, not 8. And I'm going to break this down a little more because uh, there's just so much here that you have to talk about to understand. So getting into our text this morning, the first thing I want you to see is the doctrine of the Antichrist. The very first thing Paul says is to remember, or he reminds him, he says, do you not remember the word not? Uh, shows Paul's impatience with these people. Uh, the word not is expressed as direct and full uh, negation of a statement or a fact. 
And see, Paul's a little perturbed with these people here. Not much. Because he's called them dearly beloved brothers, right? And he's called them friends. But here, he says, you should know this. Don't you remember? You see, we have a newsletter that goes out every month. We have a bulletin that goes out that you have every week. We have the announcements on the screen. And you would be surprised that the people would come up to me and say, well, I didn't know we were doing that. <laughs> well, why not? It's on the screen. It's on the bulletin. It's in the newsletter. You know, and Paul said, look, you should know this stuff. This should not have come in and crept into you and got you all confused and upset and excited about what's going on because don't you remember? Call to mind. Fix thoughts on. Don't you remember what I was telling you when I was there? See, that's Paul's reminder. But then his reasoning was, look at that verse. Twice he'll use the first personal pronoun I. See, Paul was sure of what he had taught them. Paul weren't going on some speculation. He weren't going on what either uh, uh, maybe uh, 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 Barnabas had to have taught them or something of that nature. He was saying, I taught you this. I remember teaching you this. And undoubtedly, you didn't get it. You didn't listen. How many times did you sit in a, in a service like this or in a conference somewhere and hear a speaker preach the Word of God and teach the Word of God and we get up and we walk out and it has made no difference in our life? It has made, it has no, it has had no change or no effect on you whatsoever. Paul's a little, little impatient here. He said, I was with you guys. I taught you this. Notice in that verse, it says that I was with, there's Paul's presence, and I told you that is Paul's power through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit of God. Paul said, you, you have no reason for this to be happening. And the reason I'm saying that is I was the one that did it for you. All you got to do is remember what was being said. But then, look at the, re the report he gave. This is important. He said, when I was with you, I told you these things told in perfect tense, which speaks of a repeated action in past times. In other words, Paul says, when I was with you, I told you and told you and told you and told you the same thing. You see, folks, people today in the modern church don't believe that doctrine is important and doctrine is important because if you've got a doctrinally sound uh, church, by the way, I just had a call, doctrinal sound was playing this Saturday morning at, at 9 o'clock at the uh, Grandy Travis Music Festival. So if you're not doing anything, please come and support us. We would love to have your support. Amen. 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 Thank you. But Paul said, I've told you over and over again that, uh, uh, about the rapture of the church, about the day of the Lord. The word told simply means to speak or to make an address or a speech. So undoubtedly, they had, they had believed the good part about salvation and about eternal life, but they had not paid attention to the teaching about the Antichrist and the second coming of the Lord back to, this, uh, uh, you know, back to the earth. And so Paul was a little perturbed. He said, guys, y'all should have got this. And you know, that is a pastor's heart. We don't stand up here on, on Sunday morning 30 minutes to be seen. Amen. 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 We're, trying, we're trying to help each other. And we're trying to grow spiritually together. And, and, and I know that 30 minutes is a long time for people to sit and listen to somebody talk nowadays because we're so used to videos and other such things. But preaching is an important part of the worship service, I would say to you this morning, and, 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 and just be absolutely frank with you, this is the most important part of your day. Amen. Singing prepares the, the, prepares the way. And that's good. I love music. But the most important part is what God's got to say to us. I heard a man preaching Friday morning, and he said, look, he said, if you come to hear me this morning, he said, you're in the wrong place. He said, you should have come to hear God speak from God's Word. You know, and, and then he was right, and I had to, I had to uh, agree with him. So Paul says, look, there, there, I have taught you this doctrine. There is going to be an Antichrist, a real person. He is going to be on this earth. He is going to be revealed. But you may be saying, well, what about it? If there is an Antichrist, if there is evil in the world, why don't I know it or why don't I see it? He says, well, let me explain that to you. There's a delay right now of the Antichrist. First of all, look at the realization in verse 6. He says, and you and now, right at this present time, you already know what is restrained. The word know, perfect tense, means you know, it implies fullness of knowledge. 
He said, when I was with you, I told you everything I knew about this. I didn't leave anything out. I didn't leave you guessing. I didn't leave you hanging. I didn't give you a partial uh, information to let you kind of go out on your own and try to figure it out. He said, I gave you everything that I, that I knew, and therefore everything that I know, you should know because I have told you over and over and over again, right? So he said, you should know this. You should have a fullness of knowledge. But then, yeah, what, what should I know is that there is a restraining going on. Now, restraining. The word here, what, in most translations, is a neuter word. Which means it's, it's not gentle. It's not a female or, or a, a masculine word. And, and this is important to our understanding of what's going on. It says, what is restraining? Here it's neuter in verse 7. He uses the, the first person pronoun he, which speaks of a person. So what he is saying in verse 6, there is a restraining power or force. And in verse 7, he will define that even further and say that there is a restrainer or a person uh, that is present today that is holding back evil. The word restraining simply means to hold back or to hinder or to retain something within a set limit and a set boundary. You see, we live in a world today that the Bible says itself that Satan is the power of the prince of the air. Satan is in a limited, a limited, uh, how can I say this to be? He has limited power. He is not fully doing everything that he wants to do. He is at he is making an influence. I mean, to look at the world we live in, it's getting worse and worse every single day. But there is something that is in this world that is restraining the full revelation and the full power of Satan upon this earth today. You see, Satan is a liar and the father of lies because he was a liar from the beginning and because he is, he's telling you lies. You know, most people today, young people, don't even believe that there's a devil or Satan. They believe that we're good, we're all good inside, and all we got to do is get in touch with our inside, and the good will come out, and we'll all be good people, have a good world where everybody will love each other, and things will get better and better and better. No, that is not going to happen because that is not biblical. It says in 2 Timothy that things are going to get, the old King James said that things are going to wax worse and worse, or grow worse and worse as, as the days go along. So there is something in the world today that is holding back the, the absolute force of, of evil that is in this world. And because Paul used a neuter word here uh, under the influence of the Holy Spirit and used a masculine gender in verse 7, <coughs> there's been a lot of confusion among theologians. There are at least eight different proposals given uh, why uh, sin is being restrained. And I can debunk every one of them. Some say human government. Well, human government's still here, and human government's not doing a whole lot to, to hold it back. As a matter of fact, our government's going more along with it than, than, it's hold, than it is to hold it back. Amen. They say the power of the church. Well, we see today most churches are so weak that there is no spiritual power in them whatsoever. They've already apostatized and turned away from the true teaching of the Word. And I can go right on down the list. Uh, so there's only one power that can restrain the power of God and that's got to be a divine supernatural power. Amen. Thank you, Kenny. Amen. Amen. There's, you can't control Satan. You have a hard, you have a hard enough time controlling your sin nature. Amen. Because your sin nature will beat you up every single day. And days that you're not reading and studying and praying and looking up to God and seeking God, it'll, it'll beat you up even worse and make you feel worse than you felt when you started out. So we cannot control the evil that is in this world. It takes a supernatural power to, to, uh, to do that. So there's going to be something else. This, this to me is encouraging when you read this verse. It says, and now you know, already know, what is holding back that he may be revealed in his own time. What this is talking about, revealed is a supernatural revelation. It means to make manifest or, or to reveal a thing previously secret or unknown. Man can't know God's mystery. You understand that, right? 
So he, he hasn't been revealed. There hasn't been a supernatural re revelation of who Satan is yet. Secondly, on time, uh, and I included this because I think that this is interesting. This word means a period of time marked by a suitableness of circumstance. Do you think the world is ready for the outcry? I personally do. I see the church in apostasy. I see Christians living like the rest of the world. I see the church has turned into more of an entertainment center than a worship center. I see people coming to church who don't do a thing about worshiping God. I see people serving God who are just as evil and wicked as anybody who's not even in the church. So yeah, we're ready. It is a suitable time. The circumstances are just right for the Antichrist to come on the scene. But he's not here yet, is he? It shows that God is in control of when the man of sin is revealed. Aren't you glad about that? I'm glad that God is in control of Satan, even though Satan is the prince of the power of the air and has a great influence over people today. You've heard me say this before. Satan is a very angry, mad, bad bulldog that is on the chain. And God holds the chain, and God snatches him back every now and then. He lets him go so far, and there's a bound on it, and then he pulls him back in. Because if it was not for that, this world would be a very vicious place. It is today anyway. Look at the deaths in Chicago. Look at overseas in Somalia where Christians are marched out every day. You don't hear this on the on ABC and NBC, do you? They march them out every day in the public square and they kill them because they will not refuse to deny, to, to deny their faith in Jesus Christ. We live in a bad place. And we need to be aware of why we're in that. We're in a sin cursed world. People say all the time, well, why do bad things happen to good people? Because we live in a sin cursed world. And why does God protect me from everything that comes into my life? Well, God may be trying to teach you something by allowing something to come into your life to draw you closer to it. Maybe you're getting away from it. Maybe you don't think like you did. Maybe you're not a working like that like you did at one time. So God has to bring you back the same way he holds back the evil that is in the world today. But the Antichrist cannot come on the scene right now because there's something in the world that's holding him back. Look at verse 7. Verse 7, there, there is a reality though. We just talked about it. Uh, it says in that verse, for the mystery of, lawless, of lawlessness is already at work mystery. Something unknown or not fully revealed. Impossible. Something impossible for man to discover. We know there's evil in the world, right? But we don't know the... And true Christians know the source of every sin is Satan. But the modern world that we live in today deny that there's a devil or Satan. And so they deny sin. There are even denominations who claim to be Christian denominations who claim that they are not sinners. That they have reached a point of earthly sanctification. That's not true. That is not biblical. You're going to have a sin nature until you die. Or until we're raptured out of here. And you're going to have to deal with that sin nature every day until that time. You know, I used to, I used to as, as a young man, I didn't want to die. But you know, the older I get, and the, the wiser I get, I, I think that that'll be a good time. That don't make sense, does it? Because if you deal with a sin nature every single day, like I do, then you struggle every day. Some days are great, there's no temptation, nothing going on, and then some days it, it's like a bombardment, one right after another. And the days you're the weakest is when it's work. And so there's a, it, it's a mystery to people. Why is there evil in the world? If there's a good God, here's the argument you always hear, if there's a good God, why is there evil? Why does he allow evil? So it's a mystery. Faith. The word lawlessness simply means a spirit of lawlessness. And lawlessness in 1 John 2 18 says that, says that the, the violation of all is sin. So it's just simply sin. There is sin in the world today. And, and we see that. We have abortion. We have same sex marriage. We have transgenderism. Uh, and all these other things. We have killing. And, 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 and children are not fed. Children are orphaned and just pushed out of the house. You know, there's all kinds of sin in this world. Uh, but, but, and we see that. But it's a mystery to us 
Why is it so strong in this world? Because Satan is the one that's behind it. Work. To be actively in operation. Would you agree that there's evil in the world today and, this, and, and, and that it's actively working? It's everywhere. And in my opinion, it's getting worse and worse. Uh, uh, there are things today on TV that when, when I was a child, they would have never let me on TV. Uh, there, there's movies, and with the, with the advent of the Internet, I'm not against Internet. I'm just saying you can do things for good and bad, and, and, I, and I hope and pray there's more bad on the Internet than there is good. I heard a preacher talking Friday morning again. He said, if you're on Facebook, you need to get off. Everybody don't need to know you just went and had lunch. He said it takes away from your personal relationship with God. Did you know the latest study says that the average American person spends at least five hours in front of a television every day? If you close your call to TV and open your Bible, you'd have a lot better life. But the reality says that there's a restraint. Well, the mystery of all says it's already at work. Only he, now here he uses a masculine pronoun. He who now restrains will do so until he is taken out. This is interesting. He, the word he can only, only, in this man's opinion, and, and over the years that I've studied, it's a masculine noun that refers to the Holy Spirit. Well, why didn't he say that in verse 6? But it made it a lot more simple, but it wouldn't have been as complicated. But if you're a student of the word, and I know some of you are, you know that just because Paul used a neuter word in verse 6 does not nullify the fact that he was talking about the Holy Spirit then because the Holy Spirit is referred to in the New Testament both in a masculine gender and in a neuter form of a word. So in both places, he's talking about the only power that can deal with Satan and that is the power of the Holy Spirit of God. It is God Himself, the person, the third person of triunity, that deals with, uh, with the sin that we have in the world. And it says He restrains, He holds back, or He hinders Satan from doing what He wants to in the world. You see, Satan knows that He's going to hell. Let me take that back. I just got done reading Revelation. Satan knows that not only is he going to be in the ball of his spirit for a thousand years, but he knows that after that he's going to be taken out and thrown into the lake of fire where the false prophet and the Antichrist has already been for a thousand years. And they're still alive. So there's eternal punishment there. He knows that. And see, his job, and he's very good at it, is to deceive you and lie to you and get you to believe that the fact that, first of all, there is not a Satan. There is no evil. Man's good. Secondly, you've got time. Don't worry about going to church. Don't worry about getting saved. Don't worry about serving God because you've got all your life. What about the rapper that died last week at 21 years of age? Think, you think he was prepared to go to hell? Guys, this is serious stuff. And I think we in the modern church today have, have gone away from preaching this stuff because we don't want to upset them. And we don't want to offend nobody. May I say to you, having grown up in a Baptist church, um, the preacher's going to step on your toes once in a while. He's going to hurt your feelings once in a while. He's going to make you mad once in a while. If he is, He's doing his job. Because uh, it's important that you realize there's evil in this world. John said in 1 John 2, 18, 1 John 3, 4, and 1 John 4, something, that evil's already working right now in this world. And we know that it's working. And so we have to be aware of that. I have to realize that, that it is a reality that I live in a sin-cursed world. And I have to realize also that there's a restrainer, a supernatural power that's holding Satan back right now. Third, there's going to be a removal. I love this part. Until, it, the, the last part of that verse says that he, uh, he who now restrains the Holy Spirit will do so until he is taken out of the way. Now I went through... I'm, I'm just going to bore you to death for a few minutes. First of all, until the continuation of an action up to the time of another action. 
In other words, the Holy Spirit is in place right this minute. You are indwelled. You are sealed by the Holy Spirit. And that Holy Spirit is, is here until he's taken out of the way. The Bible says, taken, it implies motion or denotes a change or transition to another place. Right now, the Holy Spirit is, is indwelling you. People say he's indwelling the church. I would disagree with that statement. He's indwelling you as an individual. You are the church, not this building, right? Everybody understand that. This is not the building. This is just a church meeting house. You're the church. You're the living, active organism of all true believers. And there's coming a time that we are going to make a change. Because the, the question arises, until he is taken out of the way, how in the world is the supernatural power of God that restrains evil going to be taken out of the world? See, that calls, that begs an answer, right? So, how's it going to happen? The Bible says, out of, out of, spoken of objects, which were once before in, in another place. See, the Holy Spirit indwells you right now, right? Somebody said you did. Yes, that's right. When you were saved, you were automatically sealed. 1 Corinthians 1, 13. Sealed until the day of promise with the, with the, with the uh, person of the Holy Spirit. You have been sanctified, set apart by the Holy Spirit. And He is working in you right now every day to conform you to the very image of Jesus Christ according to Romans 8, 20, uh, 7, 8 28, 29 through there. So, if, 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 he, if the Holy Spirit is living within me and He's going to be taken out of this world uh, or taken out of the way of this or, 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 or away from this world, then what does that talk about? That means simply that the Apostle Paul not more, not more, than maybe, at the most, maybe 16 years later. Before, because, because this book was written in AD 49. Jesus crucified in AD 32. You do the math. The main teaching of the Apostle Paul was that there was going to be a pre-tribulational rapture of the church. The Holy Spirit who indwells you. You're going to be raptured out, not the building. You're going to be raptured out of here and because at that moment when we leave, the indwelling Holy Spirit is going to leave with us. Now, can I explain that to you? Thank you. Appreciate it all. Because I'm leaving here, that does not mean that God who is omniscient, omnipresent, and omnipotent, His presence will still be here, but most theologians agree that the ministry of the Holy Spirit right now to indwell and seal believers will be changed and go back to the Old Testament dispensation of God dealing with believers when He simply called believers to salvation. The thing that separates the church from the Old Testament saying is that you are indwelled permanently and sealed permanently with the Holy Spirit of God. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit was given to an individual for a particular task and then could be, not always, but could be taken away from that individual uh, when the task was completed. Saul is an example of that, of being taken away from. David is another example of a man who was filled with the Holy Spirit. And we never read, even though David sinned and made mistakes, we never read where the Holy Spirit left David. So it's going to go back to that. And in other words, if you go read first, uh, read John chapter 16, You'll see that one of the Holy Spirit's jobs today is to convict and to convince uh, people of sin in this world. The Holy Spirit's ministry of doing that, of restraining people and telling them about sin, is going to be taken out of here with us. Because who restrains today? Who stands up for an unborn baby? Christian. Most of the time it's a Christian. Who stands up and says you ought to feed hungry orphan children? Christians. Who is it stands up and says you ought to look after that old 80, 90 year old individual who looked after you when you were a baby? Christians. And when we leave out of here, I'm telling you, they're going to have a party on earth. Because there'll be no no there. You shouldn't do that. That's right. The Bible stand. There won't be any Bible thumbs or holy roll. And they'll just go crazy. Anything will go. So there's coming a time when that love of God is going to be removed from the intensity of that love. 
And what the world is going to be left with is what the world wants, a world without the calling, convicting power of God. And everybody, as it says in the book of Judges over and over, everybody will do what is right in their own eyes. I cannot imagine living in a world of vicious people who think nothing is wrong and everything is right. That's why I'm glad that the Bible says that we're going to be raptured out of here. I tell people, how you doing? I say, I am blessed and favored, a child of the most high God, looking for the uptaker, not the undertaker. I'm ready to go, are you? Amen. I'm ready to go, are you? Amen. 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 Okay, what, what have we learned this morning? Hopefully we have learned something. Take away. Remember the report. Paul said, remember what I told you. Over and over. Remember that. Don't sit here on Sunday mornings and be thinking about getting to the golf course because you get your tea time in. Don't leave, don't <laughs> sit here thinking, oh, I've got to get my boat, I've got to get hooked up, I've got to get down to the lake so I have five or six hours on the lake this afternoon. Listen to what the preacher said. You ain't got to listen to me. But you need to listen to what somebody said out of God's word. Recognize the restraint. Recognize I am a child of God. Who I am and what God is, He's my Savior, my Redeemer. And I know that even though we live in a sin-cursed world, that, and it's going to get worse and worse as time goes along, I know that God is holding back the very worst. Because they, my mom taught me years ago, you can always get worse, right? So, re remember the report, the preaching, the teaching, Sunday school. Uh, recognize that there is a restraint for holding it back. Recognize the ruler. God's in control. Don't get discouraged because the government does all this crazy mess. They're just doing what, what, does, what comes natural to them. Because that's what you do when you're a sinner. You do what comes natural to you. And so recognize that God is in control of this world. And that one day we're going to be taken out of this world. And that we have, see we have the greatest future in the world. We have the brightest hope in this world. And death is not something to be feared, but it's something to be embraced. And know that our eternal life will begin at the moment we leave this world and, and, and go on to the presence of God. Realize that. Live by that. Understand that. And let that be the joy of your salvation. Lastly, rejoice in the removal. Man, I, you know, if there's anything I'd love to see happen, is, is Jesus wrapped this church out here before I die. Wouldn't have to go through death, wouldn't have to go through all that pain and suffering, wouldn't have to, have to go through the doubt or, or, the, or the mystery of death and walk through the valley of the shadow of death just even though you walk through it. You know, I'd rather be raptured out of here. I'd rather be here one day and back on the next. That is the expectation of the glorious spirit of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. See, let that be your, your, your encouragement every single day. God is in control. And He is going to rapture us out of this world before the Antichrist is allowed to come on the scene. We're going to look more at the Antichrist next week, okay? I might even bring you a handout from our study when you studied the Revelation. I was looking at it yesterday uh, to help you understand this. I, I knew this is a lot of information. But, anyway... I hope, and I thank you for putting up with me. I, I thank you that uh, you allow me to do this. Um, you know, God's good. Amen. And God's good all the time. Amen. And, 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 and to know that even though we live in a sin cursed world, that God's going to go to plan. <coughs> Has God got you in mind today? Has He got, are you following God's plan for your life? God's got a bright future and a hope for you. I pray that you know, that you know that you're part of God's plan. Father, bless your word as it's come out this morning. Thank you for the time to expound upon it. Father, thank you for those who've heard today. Lord, I pray that it would become woven into the fabric of our lives. And Father, that you would use this word uh, to encourage us today, but also, Father, to caution us uh, that there is a and there is an evil one. And Lord, uh, uh, eternity is long and time is short. So Father, help us to realize that and to respond to whatever the Holy Spirit may have spoke to us this morning. 
We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen.